Theology Wednesday, Arts and Music at Christ Church. Today we welcome Mr. Grace Fernandez, director of the Rose Conservatory, yeah. that meets here at Christ, at Christ Church Building during the week. A native of Brockton and a multi talented teacher, he's a, mu a musician. Greg will help us join in a drum circle. We hope you enjoy getting involved and sharing the rhythm and beat today. Today's concert is free. And thanks for the support of the Eastern Cultural Council. So, before the program begins, standard lecture is <laughs> disable your phones or turn them off or silence them or do something so that we don't have those going off. And uh, now, I'd like to welcome Mr. Craig Fernandez. Yay. If your ringtone falls in line with one of our beats, let it go. No. <laughs> um, it is such a pleasure to be here. Um, my time spent at this church over the last two years has been incredible um, in terms of the people I've got to meet, um, the new friends that I've made. Um, I hear so much the other day, I told someone I, I needed to grab something out of my office. And I said, give me one second, I gotta go to my room. <laughs> I said, no, I do not live here. But um, it just really feels like home. So I am so happy to see all of your faces and we're gonna have some fun today. Um, so as I was stating um, before, um, a, a general rule of thumb is the bigger the instrument, the deeper the sound. Um, the smaller the instrument, the more high-pitched. So it doesn't really matter for our purposes today um, what you use, but come on up, select the drum, um, and we can get started. I'm so glad I'm here. I love a few more. I was, uh, I have my son with me today. His uh, allergies are really acting up as probably some of you are experiencing the same thing. Um, so I was going to have him drum with us, but I feel safe in saying that he drums enough. Um, so he can, he can take the time out. Um, so I love the drums. I don't want to take up all my time drumming, but I'd love to speak with you guys afterwards. Drums are things that they, there has to be a story, right? There's a story where they came from, how they were made. Um, so we can talk a little bit about the drums that we're using. So all of these drums are basically... Uh, childproof replicas of a drum called the djembe, which is a lot like the one that I have here. Um, djembe is spelled D-J-E-M-B-E. -E. Um, they originated in a western country in Africa, Ghana, um, and they were used for so many things. Communication, um, they were used for festivals, for making music, um, you know, someone could be on a mountaintop drumming, someone far away could hear and they would communicate like that. They would use drums in times of war to send signals to different people um, and festivals and celebrations. So, um, kind of used for a multitude of things. Um, the original shape of the drum is this sort of goblet shape. Um, the drums that most of you have, the cylinder drums, um, they're called genius, but definitely a replica, a, a, a sort of um, a cousin of the jembe. Um, and so the goblet shape is uh, typically it would be made out of the uh, trunk of a tree, where they carve out the middle, make it nice and hollow. Um, all of the drums are hollow, um, like so. And the top, this is a very generic plastic, as most of the tops there, but a real um, native djembe would have um, the skin or the hide of some animal, because even with your own skin, um, you know, you can, it, it's flexible, it's strong, and it lasts a long time. So they stretch it around, they wrap some rope around, and the vibration from the membrane creates sound in here, and the sound is released from the bottom. So if I were to just leave it flat, you get a very muffled sound. The second I sort of tip that over and leave the air, some space to get out, you get a much different sound. Um, how we play this, there are many, many different tones that we can create with this drum. We're going to focus on two of 
them today. Um, and a sort of another rule of thumb for the drums is very nice flat hands. And what I tell the young ones is we want to pretend like we almost have super glue in between our fingers and we want to keep our fingers very much together. Now, um, a lot of times your hands and your fingers may start to tingle as we play. Um, a big reason for that um, could be a couple things. It could be either we're banging too hard, which we experience a lot with the kids, <laughs> um, or our fingers are not together. Um, it just leaves a lot more room for error when your fingers are apart and a little bit more pulsing in the hand. So the more we can keep your hand as one unit really flat, that would be very helpful. Um, so I really would like to um, take us in three phases today. Um, I want to sort of teach you something by rote where we just sort of play something, you play it back and you start something like that. Um, and then I'd like to play a bit more uh, organized piece. And by the end of our lesson today, I'm hoping that you will all be reading some very simple, simple music. And uh, we have a fun little rhyme that goes with the rhythm, so it'll be a good time. All right, so let's um, get started. So if you want to pull your drum in nice and close to you, where it's easy for you to hit. Um, now, when we play drum circles, um, we can talk about some of the drum circles and the meaning of that. Um, the circle, or our almost circle, um, really does sort of represent the idea of community and family and being together and playing as one. Um, so the circle really sort of signifies us really coming together just as people. Um, you know, for what we're doing, no one cares where you came from, what your family looks like, how much money you have in your bank account. It means nothing. It's just being here in the moment, enjoying our time together. So, um, always a, a fun thing to do. So, drum circles can range from groups of very small number, five, six, seven, ten people, um, or you can have huge groups of 100, 100, 200 people. Now, for the person leading the group, in order to communicate with everyone playing, um, if I were to just talk while everyone's drumming, there's absolutely no way you would hear anything I'm saying. Um, so the head of the drum circle, each person has sort of a, a signal, or in the musical terms they call it a call. So this sound that you're going to hear, that's my call. So when you hear that succession of beats, you're going to know that one of three things are happening. We are either starting something, we're ending something, or we're changing rhythms. So right now, um, to make this very easy for everyone, as long as you can count to four, you are going to be extremely successful today. <laughs> so that, if you cannot count to four, that's a whole other set of problems that I'm sure we can work out another time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give my call, ba, ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba, ba. and what we're going to do is just keep a nice steady rhythm, the first tone we're going to work on is the bass tone. So with our flat hand, you can place your hand right in the middle of your drum. That is going to be our bass tone. So right now, I'll just give you a call. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba, ba, and we're just going to do the steady tone. Next, here we go. Wait for me. Give me one second. I'll play the call. So what typically happens is, 
at the beginning, when you see me start to, your brain is going to tell you to copy what I'm doing. Um, so just sort of stay focused. No worries if we mess it up. I tell the kids all the time, I love mistakes. They're my best friend. We can't fix anything without screwing it up a little bit first. So make as many mistakes as you like. So I'll leave my call and here we go. So, what we're going to do is we're obviously going to hit our bass tone. 
know, you hear that, something just sort of, something's about to happen. I've got to get ready. And all of you who are right on point with that, so very nicely done. Very nicely done. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay. What I'd like to do. No, I want to this. So, um, a different rhythm we're going to do. This one is called Step by Step. So it's a little bit more, um, a little bit more jazzy in rhythm, um, but I think you'll be able to figure it out just fine. So what I'd like you to think of is just coming down to four, three, two, and one. Okay. So what we're going to do, our bass bass tone is going to be sort of our foundation. So what we're going to do is.
parts is to sort of focus on your part while there's other things going on. So what I'd like to do is we're going to break us up into little groups. And so I'm going to say, what's your name? Cindy. Cindy. From Cindy on this way is group one. From Rita down here is group two. We're going to have two. Take over here, group three on this side. And hold it down, group four over there. Yes. So what I'd like to do is going back to the rhythms we just did, the one, two, three, four, I am amazing, bass, bass, front, and just the freestyle, I'd like to have all of those things going on at once so we can sort of hear how they all fit together. So I'm going to have group one, you're going to be the first tone.
can't always tell. But one of the best parts of this is really putting yourself feeling a little tingle in the hand. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that starts to happen. <laughs> so try to remember nice clean hands and flat hands will really, really help. Um, rings don't help so much, but it'll be okay for us. Right? Um, so part of really getting into this is it's not often that we're asked to put ourselves out there, right? To, to just do something that we've never done before and just do it. And, and that's all, I, I love that part of teaching music to kids or adults because putting ourselves out there just helps us build that, that inner confidence that we all need. Um, and it's so, it's, it's one of the greatest joys in my life is to bring that thought process to the young people um, and to have them trying new things and experiencing and being okay with mistakes, right? We're going to mess up. I wouldn't believe how many times I've messed up today already. It's one o'clock. Um, but it's going to happen. So excellent job. Excellent. So, my goodness. Um, so what I have here is uh, some simple dictation, um, but with some words to sort of help us understand. Um, one thing we do at the Rose and one thing we really pride ourselves in is starting at the ground level. Our youngest student is in kindergarten right now. Um, and everyone from kindergarten to fifth grade starts with a foundation of music theory and reading and recognizing notes. Um, that is simply because we're not trying to create the next Mozart, the next Beethoven. But what we are trying to create is a, uh, an army of young people that have a tool belt of abilities that they may be able to use or may be able to help them out somewhere down the line. Um, being from Brockton, I'm, uh, I'm a Brockton native, been here my entire life, and I just remember uh, being in fourth grade, and some of you are from Brockton, I'm sure it was probably the same way um, a long time ago. But fourth and fifth grade, when children are presented with their instruments at school, that's when usually the bands start, the choruses. If you have a child that has never experienced touching an instrument or never really seen an instrument in person or had a chance to fiddle around with it, those instruments end up in somebody's closet in two weeks after they got them. And there's no interest there. There's no cultivation of the appreciation for the music. So really starting them this young to understand what these funny looking symbols look like in five to ten years, we're going to have so many kids in Brockton that are now ready for the music, ready for the instrument. And I'll give you a perfect example. One of my fifth graders, a teacher, came into his classroom the other day and uh, was talking about, you know, handing out instruments, this, that, and the other. And she's going through all these uh, sort of primer questions. And, you know, one of my students was just banging out the answers. And so she said, well, what instrument do you want to play? And he said, fifth grade. Whatever you give me. And that's the idea, right? That's the idea. So it's never too late to learn. Um, Dina and I are in the works of planning her piano lessons that she wants to start real soon. But there's always room for, for learning, right? There's always room. So what these little symbols up here look like, um, what I will say is whenever you see a double bar like these here, you're going to know that those are played faster than the ones that don't. So a good way to sort of do this is really just to sort of talk this out and we'll sort of see how the rhythm flows in this. So if you could, repeat after me and I'll get down here. Thomas A. Tatamus. Thomas A. Tatamus. Thomas A. Tatamus. Thomas A. Tatamus. Took to T. Thomas A. Tactimus, right? They're a little bit faster. I'll keep going on. To tie to tufts. To tie to tufts. To two tall trees. To two tall trees. Let's do this whole thing. One, two, here. 
we go. Thomas A. Catalus took two T's, two tie, two tops, two, two tall trees. Now we have to do some research and all the people are what is a top? A top is actually a bull, like a cow bull. So they tied two tops to two tall trees. I didn't know that. Um, so, last part, to frighten the terrible Thomas A. Tactimus. So to that from two, one, two, go. To frighten the terrible Thomas A. Tactimus. Last line, tell me how many T's there are in that. Go! Tell me how many T's there are in that. Yes, there are two T's in that. <laughs> All right, so let's say this whole thing and then we're going to get the drum. Here we go. One, two, everybody sing. Thomas A. Tatumus took two T's, two tie, two tufts, two, two tall trees, to frighten the terrible Thomas A. Tatumus. So one thing to notice, um, and I, I think composers do this sometimes, um, I don't know if it's something to make themselves feel clever, um, or it's something to really just sort of switch up the feeling of it. So we have this sort of pattern, ba, 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 and then what do they do? They flip it around. Ba, ba, ba. So it's a little different, so I'd say that's really the one here to be ready for, um, and then we're going to do this on drums. So what we'll do, and I'll make this easy for you, I'm going to underline, now if this happens, cool, if it doesn't, cool, um, uh, I'm sorry. So all of the 16th notes, the ones with the double bars, are what we're going to play on the tone tone, so on the edge. Everything else will be the bass tone. And if you'd like to sort of practice that right now while you're sitting there, you can. I encourage that. But yes. I think that's all of it. Yes. So yes, you can feel free to sort of practice that and say the rhyme to yourself. It will definitely help. So we'll just go through it really slow before we take it off. One. So, um, I will say this, 
you are all excellent sports for doing this. Um, so this is one, this is, this is really good. Um, all right, here we go, one more time and we'll do it twice. One, two, here we go.
I tell you what, I would love, now the wheels are starting to turn um, in my head, and I see some potential for a few more drumming days. Um, I don't know what you guys think. I was thinking you might need to uh, put something together, because I think um, with some time, we could really come up with something amazing. Adding some other things, and then you have something to bring up. And my goodness, my kids would lose their mind um, <laughs> if I brought in older kids. <laughs> <laughs> they would lose their seniors. mind. Exactly. exactly. Seniors like seniors in high school. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, my goodness. So, um, again, I am so thankful, so thankful for all of you guys coming here today. We're What's it called? What's it called? What's it called? What's it Oh, yeah, it was one. Okay. <laughs> um, we can definitely come back. Um, I, I really, really enjoy this. Um, sometimes people will ask me, well, there's, you do a lot of different things. Um, but I will say, I don't do anything that I don't love to do. Um, this is truly, whether it's singing with the choir, playing with you guys, playing with them, whatever the case is, it's just something that was instilled in me very, very young by my mom, who was the original James. Um, and it's just a, it is, it is a pleasure and a privilege to be able to share um, my passion and music with anyone who wants to listen. So thank you all for thank coming. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, I tell Donna, she's probably so tired hearing this story, um, but thank you Donna for putting this together, but I owe Donna so many thanks. Donna was actually the first person to call me almost two years ago, out of the blue, didn't know me from a hole in the wall, and said, hey, heard you're looking for some space to do something with the kids, and two years later, wow. Here we are. So, thank you, Donna. Thank you. 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 Thank you.